Father God, we thank you, we praise you that you are worthy, you are indeed you are worthy of all, all glory, honor, power, riches, and wisdom because you have given us your only begotten Son. You, you alone deserve all glory and honor. Father God, we just want to thank you and praise you for all your goodness and your love, your faithfulness. We thank you that you have given us this opportunity to come here together to, to, to learn from your Holy Spirit. We ask your Spirit, Holy Spirit to, to give us revelation, give us revelation on the truth that Jesus has taught us. Help us to set captives free. Help us to heal broken hearts. We, Father, Father God, we, we, we understand that this is what is lacking in the body of Christ in Singapore and in, in, in many countries in the world. How to heal broken heart. This is a mandate that, that Jesus commands us to do it. And we ask your spirit of revelation to come and teach us. Teach us by your spirit so that we will do everything that's only what Jesus taught. No more and no less. So that captives can be set free. Hearts can be healed. We thank you all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. okay. Let me, let me. Amen. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you so much for coming again to my uh, my this sharing this seminar mini seminar uh i'm so happy to see all of you and i can see in you that you're going to become uh not just ships but you're going to become lions and eagles okay after all these teachings you're going to be transformed not only are you ships but you're going to be lions you're going to crush demons you're going to uh, 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 set captives free okay everywhere you go you're going to understand how to walk in the spirit how, how to walk in the spirit not walk in the flesh okay because in the spirit is where all the finished work of jesus uh, is you only can access the finished work of jesus in the spirit and you're going to walk in 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 faith anointing and presence faith anointing and presence not just faith anointing and presence as well okay thank you for coming once again uh, before I begin, I'm going to just uh, run through my uh, what I have, you know, shared in the past few weeks, uh, my past seminars and training. So uh, in my YouTube channel, okay, if if you were to uh, text me my phone number, okay, uh, I, I put my phone number in the uh, in the. I put my phone number here. Uh, plus 65818136321. Okay, my phone number is here. So if anyone uh, wants to have the, uh, the the slides, the PowerPoint, you just text me by WhatsApp. I will send you exactly whatever uh, slides I'm using. I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, everybody can hear me clearly? Can I? Uh, just nod your head or, or thumbs up. So sorry, I have to mute everybody. If not, there will be disturbance. But uh, at the end of this lesson, I will unmute everybody and then you can ask any question you want to. Okay. So, so far, I have conducted quite a number of uh, seminars and uh, or teachings. Uh, seminars are actually, uh, what is seminar? Seminar is something that's more than one hour. Okay. Something, some, it's like a two hour thing, you know. So, uh, uh, so I've been doing that and then I've upload my uh, teachings into the YouTube. So you can actually uh, uh, connect to my YouTube and then you can just watch all, all those past uh, uh, videos. Okay, the videos, the teaching I gave in the past are very, very different from what you normally heard. Okay, uh, I, in my, my, uh, I taught one on seven principles of Bible interpretation okay how to interpret bible okay so if you were to watch that one i think one and a half or one hour video you will get you'll learn about these seven principles i think you can you'll be able to interpret bible for yourself okay seven principles and also i thought about uh how to bring kingdom of heaven on earth now okay how to bring heaven on earth now 
we Christians are supposed. Uh, is my voice clear or a lot of uh, disturbance? I, I think I think it's okay, right? Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, maybe the, the I, I saw some people type there uh, sound got interruptions, disturbance. So I think my adjustment is quite optimum really. My I can I cannot adjust anymore. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I thought about three ways to bring heaven on earth now okay these three ways uh, is faith anointing and presence and then i thought uh, what do you mean by faith mark chapter 4 the there are four kinds of heart okay the word of god is the seed you sow the right seed into the right soil you get a hundred full harvest that is faith and then i thought about anointing anointing is word and spirit word and spirit if you pray in tongues one hour non-stop the rivers of living water will gush up from your belly, literally gush up from your belly. Okay, you may not able to sense it. The, the feeling of the, the rivers of living water is very mild. But if you are in the healing ministry, like, like myself, when somebody touch your body, touch you from the back, touch you with faith, believing that you are anointed man or woman of God, the, his faith will make a demand upon the anointing, and you can tangibly felt the power, the virtue flowing up from you and that person will be healed. Okay, That is how you operate in the anointing. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. Pray in tongues one hour. Stir up the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Fan the gifts into flames. Okay, In that video, I taught how to operate in faith, anointing and presence. Very simply. And it works. But you only see it demonstrated when you are in the healing and deliverance ministry. You will see the power. Because if you just pray in time one hour, you felt something, but you don't know what is it. But when you are in the healing ministry, you can felt power leaving your body when somebody touch you with faith. Okay? Then I thought about the presence, how you can have the presence. Presence and anointing are different. Why I need to emphasize this in this, I want on to to, to encourage you to go and watch it because now it's a time for the presence or the glory of God to cover the earth as the water covers the sea. Okay, There is no more the mystery of how to carry the, the presence or host the glory or walk in the glory realm is no more. You can understand. If you watch my video, you can understand how to walk in the glory realm or host the presence. The presence and the anointing are different. The anointing is the substance of the Holy Spirit. The presence is the person of Jesus. Okay, The person of Jesus manifested. You may not be able to see him, but you can sense him. Okay, So in the video, I thought about it. The presence is, for example, in the Old Testament, Moses talked to God face to face. And, and, and there's one time, I think it's Numbers chapter 11, Moses talk to God face to face and, 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 and complain that he got to take care of so many millions of people. And God says, bring your, your, your 70 elders. I will put some of the spirit on you. I will put it on them. And so the next day, Moses came with the 70 elders and God appeared to Moses face to face. That is the presence. Okay, And, and his hands, uh, God's hand, took the spirit from Moses and put it on the 70 elders and, and the 70 elders start to prophesy. Okay, so, so the, the, the anointing, the, the substance of the Holy Spirit is the anointing. And when it, when, when, when it comes upon a person, the person can prophesy or he can move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the presence is different. Okay, the presence is the manifested presence of Jesus. Okay, so in, in New Testament, Jesus also taught about the faith, anointing and the presence. In, in John 14, 21, Jesus said, if you love me, you do my, com my commandments and I will love you. I will manifest myself to you. John 14, 21, I will manifest myself to you. Okay, so Jesus taught about faith, anointing and presence. Old Testament also faith, anointing and presence. So I encourage all of you to, to go and watch the three part video, how to do, how to, to walk in the presence. Okay, and bring heaven on earth now. Okay, amidst your, your home, your surrounding. 
okay, in your family. Bring the presence of Jesus, okay? Operate in the presence. Your, the presence of Jesus will give you rest. R-E-S-T, rest. Not the anointing. It's the presence, okay? The manifested presence of Jesus. I hope, I hope, I really hope you can go and watch the video, okay? So uh, that is a summary of what I, I, I taught previously. I, and, and now I think I will just uh, start my sharing of today's lesson. Okay. Let me see where is the slide. Okay. Okay, so so today's topic is talking about healing of broken hearts. Okay, why I want to choose this topic today, because this topic is not very very common. But I mean, a lot of churches don't don't really go into healing of of uh, broken hearts. Okay, Jesus taught about healing of broken hearts. Okay, so we want to. Talk about that okay so my powerpoint contains the link to my previous teaching video so and then my phone number is here so 8181 or also also type it in the chat group you can just take it down and whatsapp me if you have questions okay so we want to heal broken hearts because it is a mandate it is a it's a, it's a command okay heal broken hearts and we want to do it like jesus instantly or almost instantly okay almost you have to share some truth first okay you see the word here preach gospel to the poor preach gospel to the poor that means you must preach good news not not bad news not threatening news good news of, of the kingdom okay not any gospel gospel of the kingdom okay only the gospel of the kingdom can set captives free to the poor, preach to the poor. What do you mean by to the poor? People who are seeking, who are oppressed, depressed, suppressed. Okay, not anybody. People who are searching, who are who are, who are very down. Okay, not you don't preach gospel to just anybody, to the poor. And then what happened after that? This, this sentence is connected to the next sentence. You see the semicolon. He has sent me to heal the broken hearts. Then comma, Proclaim liberty to the captives. So this is one continuous sentence. The truth of the gospel of the kingdom can set captives free by proclaiming, by just speaking into somebody who are in depression, oppression, suppression. That person can be set free by the truth. Okay, His broken heart can be healed. Okay, So today I want to talk about this. How what truth, which truth can heal broken hearts? Okay. So if Jesus can do it almost instantly, like for example, the woman at the, at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well, you can do it also. It's a command. Okay. You don't have to go for so many sessions of inner healing, deliverance. It should be almost instant. Correct or not? Okay, so I want to first explain to you uh, what is spirit, soul, and body. This is very important because if, if we don't understand this, all the subsequent teaching will be you will not make sense to you. Okay, so 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says you are spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. There are three parts. Okay, you are three parts. And then uh, you, okay, so so you see the picture. Uh, your soul is your consciousness. Your soul is your consciousness. My emotion will. My emotion will. All right. What is consciousness? It it, it means you cannot see your soul. Let's say, for example, if you let's say one day you die, huh? your spirit come out from your body. I only can see your spirit. I cannot see your soul. I cannot see your soul. I cannot see your mind. 
I cannot see your emotions. I cannot see your will. Okay? They are there. They are there, but they are not tangible. They are the consciousness of your soul, of your spirit. Your soul is a consciousness of your spirit. And where is your heart? Your heart is the center of your soul. You see, you see your 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5.23, there is no heart mentioned. You are made of three parts. Made of three parts. You are not made of four parts. You are made of three only. Then where is your heart? You look at Ezekiel 36, 20, 26. I will give you a new heart. I will take away your heart of stone. I will give you a new heart. And I will put a new spirit in you. A new spirit. Okay? So, new heart, new spirit. So, your heart is a new spirit? No. Your heart can be evil. Your heart can be evil or good. But your spirit is different. Okay? A new spirit means you are born again, new creation. Okay? Your heart is where you choose evil or choose good. So your heart is a center of your soul. It's not your, your, your out, of, out, out of your heart can come out evil. Okay? But your spirit is, is holy. The Holy Spirit dwells inside there. The Holy Spirit dwells inside there. Your Holy Spirit, your, your spirit is not holy. The Holy Spirit cannot stay there. It has to live. Understand? So you must understand your heart and your spirit are separate. Okay? In all deliverance and inner healing, if you don't get this right, full stop. Nothing will work. You must know this. You must know this. Your spirit is, and the Holy Spirit is one, joined together. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. The Holy Spirit dwell in your spirit. The, your, the Holy Spirit don't dwell in your, don't really dwell in your, your soul. Okay, it's in your spirit. Your soul is the consciousness of your spirit. All right? Your spirit is the real you, not your soul, not your body. Your body and your soul is not born again. Understand? Your, your soul is still having the past memories of who you were, the old man. Okay? You still think like the past. Okay? Uh, let me let me check check uh. my uh, okay okay let me let me do something uh let me let me check somebody's saying that the sound is something wrong let me let me check uh okay no tim your sound is perfectly all right maybe the other person has the problem on her side oh okay 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 all right okay lah. okay so i can let me let me just continue uh okay so so our spirit is the real us Okay, our spirit is seated in heaven now and here at the same time because of the Holy Spirit in us. We are in two places at the same time. Our Holy Spirit is, is holy, righteous, okay, and righteous and holy. Okay. So our our spirit is royal priesthood. Our spirit is a king, is more than a conqueror. Okay, but not our soul. Our soul our, is work in progress. Okay, you must understand this. Our spirit has got this part called communion, intuition, and conscience. Our spirit has got this three part. We are supposed to operate in the spirit, not op operate in the soul, not, not op operate from the, from the intellect. You see, our mind has got this intellect here. Okay, we are, most of us are trained from young to operate from the intellect, from the soul. But... The Bible says, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. That means we are supposed to operate from the Spirit. And our mind are supposed to be, uh, to give understanding to what the Spirit is saying. Okay, if you watch my, my previous video, The Kingdom Now, Three Ways to, for the Kingdom Now, 
I explain very clearly how, how it works. And I also teach you how we can sharpen it. We can operate, we can learn three types of prayer, soaking prayer, ministering to the Lord, and prophetic intercession, how we can sharpen our spiritual senses. Okay, I hope you can go and read it for yourself. I'll go to the next slide. Okay. So our soul is, the devil cannot attack our spirit. Okay, because the Holy Spirit is there. Our spirit looks like a flame of fire. Hebrew 1.7. Hebrew 1.7. We, we are, we looks like a flame of fire. Okay. In our spirit. Because of the Holy Spirit inside our spirit okay the devil can only attack our soul attack our mind and our emotion he cannot attack our spirit okay so if our soul has got wounds we we need healing because the way that the devil attack our health is through the soul by causing mental or emotional trauma and then that cause wounds to our soul okay and these wounds will of our soul will affect our brain, affect our hormonal system, affect our immune system, and affect our nervous system. And that, that, that's why we have sickness. Otherwise, we are not supposed to have sickness because our, our body is designed by God. Okay, our, uh, It's supposed to be uh, uh, healthy. Our immune system is supposed to kill all cancer cells and all viruses. But why sometimes it's not working? Why is our immune system not working sometimes? Okay, so it has to do with the healing of the soul. We need to heal the soul. So this whole lesson also covers that. So I hope you can pay attention to it. Okay. So I explained, uh, the slide contains more detail. I, I'm not going to cover everything. Uh, the slide was self-explained. It talks about the hormone, cortisol, adrenaline, when, 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 when we have a wrong belief against our identity, we have self-rejection, uh, uh, we have fear in us, that cause cortisol and adrenaline to be excreted and that suppress the immune system. So, and, and, and sometimes we hate ourselves, let's say we have self-unforgiveness, self it, it, it triggers autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease means our immune system attacks our own body organs. And it, it causes disease like arthritis, dementia, Parkinson, type 1 diabetes, for example. Okay. Doctors cannot cure autoimmune disease. Doctors cannot cure. Okay. They only can give you medication to manage the symptoms, manage the symptom, to delay the symptoms, but doctors cannot cure. The only way is you get rid of self-hatred, self-unforgiveness, do inner healing. Okay. When we do inner healing, we are, we are making a closure. We are making a closure to whatever in the past. What do you mean by that? We are a new creation in our spirit, but our soul is not born again. There are some past hurts and wounds belong to the old man, doesn't belong to us. They need, they need to have a closure. Closure, what do you mean by closure? Close account. Okay, so... so so, so let's continue. So your spirit is your real you and not your soul. You have to believe that. Okay, You have to believe that. And that's how you can have inner healing. If you don't believe that, you think your soul is you, then nothing can be done. You have to believe your past, your old man is, is, is belonging to the old man. You are a new man. You are a new creation. Okay. So your spirit is really more than a conqueror. Your, your spirit, God sees your spirit. Okay. When God sees you, it, God sees your spirit. And when God sees your spirit, God sees Christ in you. He sees Jesus in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You are in Christ and Christ is in you. When, when God sees you, God sees Jesus in, he, in, in, in you. Okay? That's the truth. God esteems you highly. God thinks you're very, you are more than a conqueror. You are, este you, are, you are destined for greatness. Okay? 
God thinks you are a, a king. Jesus is a king of kings and you are a king. You got authority. You are holy you, because you are a royal priesthood. Okay? Your true identity is your spirit and not your soul. Your spirit is holy and blameless permanently. Your spirit is righteous. It's one spirit with Jesus. You are in Jesus, in your spirit, and Jesus is in you. Okay? Inseparable. But you say, hey, this morning I just sin. This morning I just get angry when I'm not supposed to be angry. You, I just committed a sin. Okay? I didn't even repent. Until now, I still haven't repented. So I, I sure I'm holy. You are still holy in your spirit. But you, you walk in the flesh. Okay? When you walk in the flesh, it means you, you, your soul and your, and your flesh cooperate. Romans 8, 5. When you are in the flesh, your mind is full of things of the flesh. Your mind is full of things of the flesh. Romans 8, 5. When you are in the flesh. That means you walk separately from the spirit. You are not walking in the spirit. So when you walk in the flesh, you are under the law and you have to repent. If you don't repent, the devil will kill, steal and destroy. So we are we have to be quick to repent. Okay? But your spirit is remain holy. Doesn't mean when you sin, your spirit will leave you. The, the Holy Spirit will, will leave your, your spirit. Doesn't mean you sin now and, and the Holy Spirit will leave your, your spirit. No. It doesn't. Okay? You must understand this. You are forever holy. You are fighting sin from a position of victory from sin. You are fighting sin from a position of victory from sin. If you believe that you are a sinner, you, will, you can never, never defeat sin. You will always want to go back to the same sin again and again. If you believe wrongly, okay, if you believe that you are just a, just a sinner, you were a sinner. But if you believe you are still a sinner, you will continue to sin. But if you believe that you are already holy, blameless in your true person, your spirit, from there you can overcome sin. You can live a holy life. You understand? This is how, how we must understand then we can overcome sin. This is how we must understand. This truth you must understand. Then you can overcome sin. So we are different from the old covenant. We are not spiritually separate from God. We are, God is already inside you, inside your spirit. Okay? So, but we sin, we must. Doesn't mean we once saved, always saved. No. If we don't repent, we can still lose our salvation. Okay? Remember this verse, Luke 24 47. Luke 24 47. Okay? Jesus commands us to preach repentance and remission of sin. Jesus command that we preach repentance and remission of sins. That means our sins are forgiven past, present, future, but we have to repent. Remission of sin is by Jesus, by God. Repentance is by us. These two must come together. These two must come together. Then we are set free. Okay? We still need to live a, a life of repentance to shut the door to the devil. That means we can come to the holy of holy even we sin. Even when we sin, we can come to the... In Old Covenant, Old Testament, you cannot come to the holy of holy unless you sacrifice an animal. But in the New Covenant, we sin, we can still come to the holy of holy, the throne of grace, and repent. Okay, that's, that's what's different from the Old and the New Covenant. Okay, because our sins are forgiven past, present, future. That's why we can come to the holy of holy to repent. Three tests in wilderness for everyone. Why is it inner healing is needed? Okay, so in Matthew 4, 1, Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Okay. So Jesus fasted 40 days okay, before 
Jesus fasted 40 days, okay, during that period of that thing, okay. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit to the wilderness to be tested by Satan. Okay, you must you read carefully. Uh, this is what happened. Okay, so in the in the Old Testament, the children of Israel was also tested in the wilderness, same as Jesus. Okay, so during the time of testing, the 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 children of Israel turn around and test God, even though they see how God provide for them, help them. Uh, a manna, fire by night, a cloud by day, for forty years, and someone got manna from heaven, and yet they tested God for forty years. They tested God for forty years. They, that means they they don't believe. They 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 have unbelief in their heart, and they try to test God. Okay. They always err in their heart. They do not know the ways of God, and God was so grave with them. They err in their heart. They have unbelief in their heart. Okay, so so they they, they were tested and they failed the test. They were failed that they failing the test for forty years. You know, not just one test. The test when they fail, another test come, again another test come, and they keep failing for forty years. Okay, and how they fail? They err in their hearts. So in the in the one Corinthian ten one two also talk about the same thing, okay? In the in the in the wilderness, okay, they lust after evil things, okay? The idolatry, they go and worship the golden calf, okay. And then also they complain and murmur. They complain and murmur. And what happened when they complain and murmur? They complain against God. They complain against Moses. Okay, complain about wow. Tell Moses, ah, uh, you brought us to this place, ah, uh, to kill us of hunger. We'd rather go back to Egypt. They complain. Okay, they murmur, and what happened? They were destroyed by the destroyer. Okay. So a lot of times we also have this kind of problem. We complain against God when we have some trials in our lives. We start to murmur against God. Okay. Uh, let me see. So Jesus was tested by Satan forty days. Children of Israel is also supposed to be tested forty days, but they failed repeatedly for forty years. Okay, some some of us also like that. We are some we all of us after you become a Christian, after you become a Christian, you 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 are supposed to be tested forty days only, and then after you pass, you are supposed to enter your abundant life, your promised land. Forty days only, okay. But they keep failing this test for forty years. What test? What, what what is the test about? Three tests, but two types. There's only two types, okay. The first test is if you are the son of God. Test of your identity. You whether you believe you believe you are the son of God. That means you are loved. You are you are his beloved. You are protected. You are provided for. Okay, you are you are you are the you are the, you are the son or, or daughter of God. Okay, this is one of the tests, one of the two tests, two type of tests, whether you believe or not. Okay, if you believe, then you, then you should you should not complain and murmur. If you the minute you complain in your heart or well, something go wrong, uh, you start to murmur, complain. That's it. You fail the test. Very simple test. Whether you believe. You are the son of God, okay. So, how does how does Jesus answer Satan? Okay, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word from the mouth of God. Okay, by by every word. That means the word of God says, "I'm a son." That's it. I don't need to to test it to prove it. I don't need to turn the stone into bread. I don't need to prove it. I just believe the word. I'm a son of God. I'm 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 a priest, royal priesthood. I'm a king. I got spiritual authority. I'm clothed. I'm anointed with power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm seated in heavenly places right now. I don't have to to uh, prove it. Okay, the Word of God says so. That's it. I believe it. Okay.
No need to prove. See the next verse, then the devil take him to the high mountain, uh, ask him to bow to him, if, and, and the devil will give him all this king authority. But Jesus said, we shall only worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. So what does that, what, what, what is this test about? This test is about whether you love the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in us. Okay, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in us. Okay, this test is whether you love the Father more than you love the world. So sim very simple, two tests only. Test whether you believe you are the beloved sons of, or daughters of God and whether you love the Father more than you love the world. These two tests, very, very, very simple, right? So all of us will be tested. Okay, if you pass the test, you enter your destiny, your abundant life. Just as just as did, Jesus did, you, you will be walking in power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, in the fullness of the power of the Holy Spirit. Next, next verse. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. Okay. Again, the this third test uh, is also testing whether Jesus believed he's the Son of God. Okay. Seems that. This testing of identity is more common. Okay. And, and what Jesus responds is you should not tempt the Lord your God. That means you don't put God to the test. The word of God says, I'm a son. That's it. I don't need to I, I don't need to 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 uh to to prove it. Okay. So this should be our response. We mustn't put God to the test. The word of God say, say what about your identity? That's it. No need to prove. Okay. So everyone will have to face a test. Until you pass, then you enter his rest. R-E-S-T, rest. Okay. We, we we simply believe, okay. So after that, Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit, okay. And then you see below here, this whole passage is continuous, okay. Preach gospel to the poor, heal broken hearts. This is one sentence: proclaim liberty to captives. What does all this mean? Broken hearts, captives. What? Captives or what? This is not the captives in the dungeon. This is a captives by, by those people who got spiritual oppression, suppression, depression. Captured by a spirit of rejection, depression, or, or by, by, by the devil. Okay, this captive is talking about that. It's not talking about human in the prisoners in the dungeon. And you can set them free by proclaiming liberty. So this, the above uh, three tests is connected to all this, 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 this broken hearts. If the person don't believe he's a son of God, you, because we are all created, designed by God, that we must believe we are the sons of God. And you, if you believe a lie from the devil that you are not, something will happen to your heart. Your heart can be broken. Your, you can have a wound to your soul. Okay? And you can be captured part of the soul can be fragmented. If the trauma, the wound is so serious, the, wound, the soul can be split. Okay? And then a spirit of depression can capture it. A spirit of rejection, depression, or fear can capture the part of the broken soul. But you're still okay. You look okay. Okay? Occasionally, you have this attack of fear, attack of anxiety, attack of, 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 of uh, depression. Okay? Like as though there's a, another part of you inside you. As though there's another part of you inside you. Okay? So today we want to talk about healing of, of this, all this. And it's linked to the previous story about the tests, the three tests. They are all connected. It, and it has to do with any unbelief or believing any lies against our identity. 
as sons of God. Okay. And you can set captives free by just proclaiming the truth. Proclaiming liberty to the captive. You can proclaim the truth about their identity to somebody who is depressed and you can see instantly their eyes will change. Their eyes will change. Okay? Like something shake them like that. And then they, they just, you know, the, the spirit of depression just, just temporarily or maybe temporarily or, or even can be sometimes can be permanent, leave. The result is very, is almost instantaneous by just proclaiming the truth about their identity. Okay? So we want to, we want to talk more about this. Okay? So Adam and Eve was told a lie by Satan. Okay? He, basically, Adam and Eve was even going through the same test. Identity. They don't, they don't quite believe that they are already gods. Because Adam and Eve was given dominion over the whole earth. Okay? So when Satan tells them, you eat this fruit, you become like, like gods. Huh? So they're trying to tell, Satan is trying to tell Adam, you are, you are, you are not, you are, you are nothing. You know? But you eat this fruit, huh? you can be like gods. Okay? And also telling him that God is withholding good things from you. God is not really your father. God is not really your father. God, God is holding back something good from you. you will, that's why he doesn't want you to eat the fruits. Don't trust God's love. Okay? So, so Adam was tested in this manner. Okay? And also tempts, tempting them to be, to be self-dependent apart from God. So Satan always attacked with half truth against our identity. So a lot of times when we want to do inner healing for people, we listen to them and then we pray in tongues. We always ask Holy Spirit, show me what is the half truth or, or lies they are believing against their identity as sons of God. And the Holy Spirit will show. Okay, And you speak it to the person you can see almost instantly their looks okay change okay you can see the the the, the depression oppression you can see the eyes change from the because the eyes is a window to their hearts and can, when you see the 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 at their look when you look at the eyes you can see a change in the in them okay so god allow why why did god allow all the testing He wants, he, he wants us to truly believe that He loves us. He wants us to believe that He loves us. Okay? He wants to, he don't want to force us to believe. He, he's not making us into robots. He wants us to choose to believe. It's a choice. To believe that He loves us. He's madly in love with us. Not just love us. He's madly in love with us. Okay? He's like our bright groom. He's like, like, like our husband. He's like our father. He's like our best friend. Okay? He wants us to choose to believe that. Not force us to believe. Okay? So, so that's the purpose why he allowed us to be tested by Satan. Okay? God allowed Jesus to be tested by Satan in the wilderness. Okay? And God purposely test the children of Israel in the wilderness, okay, for this purpose, okay. So, if somebody in, so, in the wilderness test, if any one of us, okay, we have a setback, that, 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 that usually, this, this test, there will be a small setback, not a big trial, and then Satan will put a thought in the head, nobody expects you are poorly esteemed. Uh, uh, you are nobody. You uh, you are you have failed. Uh, you are you are failed as a as a uh, as a adult, as a mother, as a you are sinful. As a father, you are you are a failure. You are not able to provide. You are you are failing in your career. Nobody nobody respect you anymore. So when you believe this this thought, this thought, okay, that that is indirectly connected to your identity, there will be a trauma. 
okay, there must be an event happening. There must be a setback first. If there's no setback, devil can put all these thoughts in your head. Nothing will happen to you. But when there is a setback, at the same time, the devil put these thoughts into your mind and then you receive it, you believe it, a wound will happen. A mental or emotional trauma will happen. Okay, I have many examples uh, about this. Many years ago, my my younger my 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 nephew, okay, he's very very intelligent. When he, that time he was only primary primary six, okay, he was very very intelligent. His grandmother promised him, said, "You continue to do well. I will use my life saving to sponsor you to study university." Okay, you you are uh, uh, you are you are like. Like in this family, you are like a like a, a star, you know. You got so bright, huh? You are so we are so proud of you. He has so many family relatives telling him all this kind of thing, expectation, putting him putting expectation upon him. Okay, and one day during the PSLE exam, there was a, a paper that he forget to submit. He forget to do. It was below, buried below, and then he just do the first few paper, and then he. Then you, when the when the when the bell rings, he realized he forget to do one paper, and then he start to panic. He thought he will fail, and then and then on that day, something happened to him. He was like in a trance. Okay, he he was, I believe he was. Then then after that he start to have fits, epilepsy. Until today he have to take medicine. After twenty years, today he still have to take medicine to. Control his epilepsy. He he have an epilepsy from that day onwards. And how how that how does it happen? He was thinking, oh, my, uh, I will fear. I will not do well in my start. I will fear. I will disappoint my, uh, my 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 mother, my father, my grandmother. Wow, you know, he he. When a person keep thinking about something that he's powerless to do anything, he but he keep thinking. Again and again in a cycle, he can suffer a mental trauma. What what is a mental trauma? That means his mind can split. He was he was become like a zombie. Okay, you talk to him, he don't look at you. It's like a like his soul was so wounded, captured, you know. And then the doctors had to give him some medication to make him sleep, sleeping pill to make him sleep. So after a few days, he's okay, but he start to have epilepsy fits. There seems to be a trauma to his soul, okay, and causing him, causing him to have epilepsy or a spirit of epilepsy goes inside him after he had this trauma. Okay. So, so I, I want you to understand. A person's identity or self-esteem or self-worth when it is being disappointed or broken. It can lead to a trauma. Okay, our our identity must be based on the word of God. We are more than a conqueror. I don't. We don't care what is our what what is happening now. But the word of God says, "I'm more than a conqueror. I can do great exploit for His kingdom." Okay, you have to believe it, and then you are bulletproof. Okay, from you will pass all the tests. Okay, so a spirit of fear, rejection. Anger, bitterness, enters the person. The devil cannot give anyone any spirit of fear, rejection, or anger. Cannot, unless there is a trauma. Unless there is a trauma, he cannot. Suka suka, suddenly you feel depressed. It doesn't work that way. It can never happen. You have to believe a lie against your identity. You have to seriously believe it in your heart. Not just think, ah. Uh, you seriously believe in a heart, and why, and how you believe in a heart when something wrong happened, when there there was a test, there was a trial, and you believe in your heart, you know, that 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 some that something something against your identity, and then a trauma will happen, a wound to the soul, and then a spirit of fear, rejection, or or or, or anger or bitterness can come inside. So you must understand this. The purpose of this test is to prepare you to go to heaven. Okay, when you are in heaven, ah, uh, there's no more test already. 
you have to believe that God loves you. You are the sons of God. Okay? You must love God and believe that He loves you. Okay? It's to prepare your faith to believe that He loves you. So, so Hebrew 3 7 talks about uh, they go astray in their hearts. Why they go astray uh, in their hearts? Because they don't believe they are the sons of God. They don't believe that Adam Adam was the son of God. Okay? They don't believe uh, they are uh, 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 a special chosen people. The children of Israel are supposed to be a special, special chosen people. Okay? And, and they don't, and, 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 and even they see all the miracles. Cloud by day, fire by night, they don't believe. They go astray in their hearts. Okay. When you don't believe your identity, we can go astray in our hearts. Okay. We can murmur against God. Okay. So we are going to deal with all this later on. Okay. So the soul can be wounded. You see this verse talking about wound, broken soul. Uh, uh, a soul that is not, that needs to be restored. That means there is a, a, a brokenness, brokenness, okay, that need to be restored, okay. You have, you, you have laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the depth. So a person who has has got a, a wounded soul, part of his soul can be captured like, like, like in a pit, in darkness. The person can sometimes have sensation of being inside a pit, bound. He cannot do anything. He want to find a job. He want to move out from the depression. He can't. He's like inside a pit, trapped inside in darkness. Everything is so dark around him. Okay? So the, the soul can be imprisoned. Those who practice black magic and witchcraft, uh, they can attack somebody by attacking their soul. Okay, But of course, for Christian, they cannot attack us because we have the Holy Spirit in us. Okay. Okay, sorry, this, this verse is talking about the the pe people who use black magic charms to hunt souls, to kill them. Okay, they, they attack souls, those souls who are not pre not, not Christians. Okay, they can hunt them and kill them. Okay. Using magic magic charms. Okay. So if, when we, how, how, how this broken hearts and captive soul arise is when we believe there is no one to, no one to love us, no one is there to protect us, no one esteem us at all, then a trauma will happen. Or, or we feel uh, the expectation of, of what we are supposed to be, uh, uh, what, what we're supposed to do. Uh, we are supposed to be a mother, but we feel as a mother. If we are supposed to be a father, we feel as a father. We cannot provide, we uh, maybe, the, the person was retrenched and then he thinks he kept on thinking oh I, I i'm a failure i'm a failure and then he get into a depression a trauma will happen and then he get into depression okay so it's it has to do with a a, a a broken heart and a wounded soul okay so sometimes the the the, the memory is so painful that the person suppress the memory Okay, for example, during childhood, uh, uh, the person has got a, a, the parents divorced and then he was being uh, uh, given away and then he, uh, he, the, the memories of this is so painful. So he, 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 can, he can, every time he think about it, uh, there's a pain in the heart. Okay, so he suppressed the memory. He doesn't want to think about it. And when that happened, uh, the soul split. The soul split into two or three. And part of the soul is captured by a spirit, a spirit of rejection, or whatever spirit that caused the trauma 
associated with the trauma. So that 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 splitting, uh, it, psychiatrists call it split personality. The split split personality is not an evil spirit. It's like those as though there are two persons inside us. The two person is actually the same person. Okay, it's not an evil spirit, but that the second person, the second person, the split soul is captured by a spirit of depression or or whatever spirit that associated associated with the trauma. Okay, this this whole splitting is a coping mechanism designed by God so that we do not we don't go mad completely. You suppress the memories. Okay, you, we suppress the memory so that we don't go mad completely because of the painful event. Okay. So that's that's why that's 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 how a split soul can be captured, can be captured by a spirit. Okay. So some people they went through a lot of trauma, sexual abuse, rejection, physical pain, emotional abuse at a young age. Okay, at a young age when he. He doesn't know how to think. He think he think that adults are always correct. But when he when he when he he receive abuse from them, he he thinks something wrong with himself, and he and his and the pain and the shame cause him to suppress his memory, causing his soul to split. Okay. So so part of the soul broken soul is captured. That's why we need. To do inner healing. Okay. So you see here the picture split so. Okay. What's the time now? Right. So the soul can be split into many. Okay. So how to cure? We have to proclaim the truth about our identity. Okay. We must know that our spirit is different. It's not our soul. Okay, our spirit is the real us and not our soul. Okay, and we must know that our soul, our spirit is, is uh, you can be a Christian when you're young, when you're, when you're when you're a little child. There was one one example. Uh, this there was one guy. He's a Christian since, since childhood. Okay, he was molested. This guy was molested by when he was a child by a man, and then from that day onwards, he always feels shameful. He feels so dirty, and feel very insecure. Now he's a grown man. He's a tall, big size, but he feels very insecure. Okay, so he talked to me uh, about this. Then I told him that that when you are when you when you are a Christian, okay, you your your spirit is born again. Holy Spirit is in you. Your holy, your spirit is forever holy and sanctified. It's holy, even though your body can be defiled, can be molested or whatever. But your spirit remains the same. Your spirit remains the same. Your spirit is a real you, not your body. Okay, not your body. So what you need to do now is, is, is. Choose to believe the word of God, just as Jesus did, that you are, you are, you are, holy, okay. You are not defiled. You are the sons of God, and then I want, then you say with me, I say with me this 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 prayer, that I I I tell God that you know I don't know why it happened, how how come it can happen, but it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Why I was molested as a child. It's not your fault. Okay, so I, I I let him to say this prayer. Okay, then I, I let him to say, okay. Uh, I I thank you that my spirit, my I'm my my person is my spirit. It's not my body. My spirit mean, remains holy, sanctified. Okay, my real person is my spirit. Okay. So you know what happened? I suddenly. I felt something left him, okay. Something left him. Oh, oh sorry. I, I I forgot to say. I asked him to give a uh, issue uh, to say forgiveness to the person who molested him. That means tell Jesus, I forgive the person who molested me. 
asked Jesus to bless the uh, Jesus said you must bless your enemy. So we asked him, I asked him to bless the person who molested him. Okay. Ask Jesus to, to reach out to him, save him from the kingdom of darkness. Okay. And, and the minute he confessed that he is his, his identity is what the word of God says, suddenly something left him and his countenance changed from a, a timid, a, 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 a fearful person, changed, totally changed. Okay. Become uh, confidence. Okay. Become having confidence. No, the, 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 you can see the eyes, the countenance change totally. Okay. So this is, this is what I did for this guy. It's like, like a, within 45 minutes, his countenance changed totally. Okay. I believe he was delivered from this, this uh, uh, from a spirit of shame and, and condemnation. His, his soul, his broken soul, wounded soul, which was captured was released. Okay. So you can actually what do what Jesus said, proclaim liberty, speak liberty to the person, and you see the, the captive set free. Just just proclaim liberty. But what words are you going to use when you proclaim? Okay, it has to do with the identity as sons of God. It has to do, do it has to do with that. And you must ask Holy Spirit to show you. What is it about? Why? What is the lie that he's believing in, causing him to be captives? Okay, and you when you declare decree, you see almost instant result. Okay. So, so forgiveness of. The enemy who wound us is very important. If we don't forgive, okay, our sins will not be. Uh, if we don't forgive, uh, it's like having a torturer. We are in, like like being, uh, uh, we are being in prison. Not 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 your enemy. We we don't forgive. So we need to say to Jesus, "I forgive the person," okay. And also we have to, uh, we have, we have to forgive them. If we don't forgive them. Our sins will not be forgiven. That's what Matthew chapter 6, 14 to 15 says. If we don't forgive other people who sin against us, our sins will not be forgiven. Okay. Uh, okay. And then Jesus also said we must we must uh We must bless our enemies. We must love our enemy. We must pray for our enemy. So we must bless them. Okay. We must bless them. And that's that's when you when you when we want to do a prayer to do inner healing, we have to do this. We have to uh, bless our enemy, pray for our enemy. Okay. So repentance must be from the heart. Okay. Must be from the heart, not soulish. Ran your heart. Your heart is not your not your soul. Your heart is the center of your soul. Okay. So, so you see here, Greek concordance for repent is changing your mind. Hebrew concordance for repentance is feeling sorry. Okay. Joel 2.13, ran your heart. So repentance, if you just feel sorry, is too shallow. Change your mind also is true, but too shallow. It has to be hard. Okay. And and sometimes you have to fast to break the flesh. Okay. Fast. And sometimes some sins are too too deep. You may have to fast. Okay. So uh so sometimes in the past. In the past, in our childhood, we have wounds from our parents. We have uh, uh, parents not, not around, working long hours, not showing us love. And sometimes we have abusive parents. And, and, and we may think that we have forgotten all this. But all this is a cause of our 
lack of self-confidence, lack of, uh, I mean, insecurity or, 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 or feeling rejected. And then we try to control, we try to become perfectionist. You may you thought you forgot, forgotten all those things happened 20, 30 years ago, but our character is formed because of all this, okay? So inner healing is, is supposed to bring a closure to all those things that happened when we were childhood, okay? A person with a split soul, that split soul is like an inner child, okay? Let's say he has a split soul at five years old. So that, that is as, as though somebody inside him, a five-year-old ch child inside him, okay? And occasionally he may behave like a five-year-old child. When the, when the five-year-old child inside him manifests, he may behave like a five-year-old child, okay? And that five-year-old child is not an evil spirit, it's, it's him. But of course, there is a spirit that controls that five-year-old child. Okay. So when uh when we care we, we when we do have this inner healing, we carry this this negative emotion. Sometimes we carry negative emotion, bitterness of what happened in the past, we carry it to adulthood and it can sometimes affect our marriage or our 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 relationship with our our families. Okay. So all these texts are uh, is like a summary. I, I don't need to go through every one of them. It's, it's, most of it are repeated from what I said. So if you have the slides, uh, you can just see for yourself. Okay. So this there's a lot of negative and un, unresolved negative emotion that that we need to uh, have a closure. Okay, closure means you repent of them. Okay, you forgive your enemy, you repent of them. Closure. Okay. So the way, so remember this. A broken soul is broken because of suppressed memory, because you hide, you try to suppress the, the painful memory and that's why it's split. Okay, so the solution is tell it to Jesus. No need to tell the pastor, tell it to Jesus. When you tell to Jesus, the more you tell, the more you release, the more you unload, the more you... Uh, 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 you see... The devil works in darkness. If you hide something, you suppress something uh, because of shame, uh, the devil will bring it up occasionally to poke at you, to stir you, so that you manifest. But when you tell it to Jesus, you are unhiding it. You are bringing it to the light. You are bringing it to the light. You are exposing everything to Jesus. To Jesus only, not to any pastors. To Jesus only. You tell it to Jesus. Okay? And you and, and after that the devil has nothing to, to 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 operate already because you unhide it already. No more darkness. Devil work in darkness when you hide. Okay? So when you so it, it you unhide it, you tell it to Jesus, I was I was molested at, at five years old, at ten years old. Tell it to Jesus. I feel I feel, I feel so ashamed. Tell it to Jesus. Okay? I declare I I I'm I uh, I want to forgive the person who molests me. Okay, please bless him. Please forgive him. Okay, I declare my identity is not defiled because I'm a born again new new creation in in Christ in you. My spirit is 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 perfectly holy. Perfectly holy. Okay, I'm a new creation. Those memories that I have is not from from me. It's from my old man, from my past. I'm a new man. I'm a new creation. So you say all these things. When you say all these things, you are having a closure. You are closing, like a closing account. Okay? And then the devil can no longer use it to poke at you, stir you up. Because the account is closed. Okay? And throw away. Okay? So we need to do that. That's what inner healing is about. It's, it is, this inner healing is for ourselves. For ourselves, is 
is very fast. Okay, but you may not remember everything. You may not remember for the last 50 years, 30 years, those things that you went through. Most of the trauma happen when you are young, not when you're adult. Because adult, you can think. But it's from young. Mostly it's from young. You may not be able to remember them. Okay. Why don't you all read together uh, the red color one? Whatever shame from past doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the old man, my previous human spirit. But now I am a new creation in Christ. My spirit is born again. I'm perfectly holy. I'm perfectly holy. I am righteous. I'm clothed in the righteousness of God. I'm seated in heavenly places right now. I am I, I, I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. Okay. My past is doesn't belong to me. It's belonging to the old man. Okay. So, so closing account, okay, closing account or closure is what, we, what inner healing is about. Okay. We are supposed to operate in the spirit, walk in the spirit so that you will not satisfy the last of the flesh. Okay. The whole New Testament is everywhere is talking about walking in the spirit, be it walk in the spirit. Okay. But sometimes when we are in the flesh, what happened when you're in the flesh, the devil stir up all these things again. Those things from the past. Those things that we don't have a closure. Those things that we don't have a closure yet. So you know, oh, wow, how come I like that? Huh? Oh, that means you don't have a closure for that thing. Okay? What, what caused you to be like that? You ask Holy Spirit to show you, is it from my past when I was a child? My mother said something, uh, said you are uh, you're born as a woman. You are not. Uh, you, you're. You're not a man. I actually. I want to have. We want to have a boy, but you came out. So. So you have to have a closure. If you have this thought, if you have this, you have this thing that causes you to feel like you are so, uh, reject. Then you need to have a closure. Okay. You need to say. You need to tell it to Jesus. I feel so inferior. My mother said that to me. Tell it as it is. Say it out to Jesus. Unload it from yourself. Open it up to the public, to the light. My mother said that to me when I was young. I feel, I feel so lousy. Tell it to Jesus. Open it into the light. Okay? And then, you, then, then after, after that, you say, my identity, I, my identity is not what my mother said. My identity is what the Word of God said. I am a daughter of God. I'm a son and daughter of God. I'm esteemed highly by you, Father God. Okay? I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a, I'm a king. You're the king of kings. I'm the king. I got spiritual authority. Okay? So you, you, you need to go through this to have a closure. Okay? So that what happened in the past don't cause you to behave in, in uh, you know, have, to have this rejection, uh, you know, Continue to have this rejection. Okay, give it a closure. So, five steps. Okay, let me. I think we are coming to the close to the end. Five steps: unhiding the suppressed memory of past shame and to Jesus. Okay, no need to tell to anyone, pastors. You just tell it to Jesus. Okay. Later on, you, you can all of you can mute yourself. Okay. I hope you are alone in your room. And you just tell Jesus what is the most uh, painful things that you can remember. Okay? Painful thing that you can remember. Tell it to Jesus. Okay? The more you tell, the more detail you tell, the more your soul is liberated. Because remember, when you suppress the memory, your soul fragmented, split. When you tell it to Jesus, you are unhiding what happened. You are you are saving. You are taking out the the, the soul that was that was a uh, uh, split to put it back. You understand? Number two, repent for murmuring in your heart. 
Okay? Remember, when we murmur against God, we blame God, we open the door to the destroyer. That's what Hebrew, uh, I think I think it's Hebrew chapter 3 is talking about. Okay? When we murmur against God, we blame God for our problems. Uh, we are opening the door to the destroyer. We renounce lies, number three, renounce lies against our identity as sons of God. Okay? Our identity as sons of God means what? I am important. I'm esteemed highly. I am a I, I'm, I'm very, very precious that Jesus would die for me. Okay, I don't care what my mother thinks about me. My identity is based on the word of God as sons and daughters of God. Okay, my identity is not based on what my parents say about me. You have to say it out. You have to say it out. You must confess, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Okay, and then you release forgiveness first to yourself. Then to your parents or to whoever say those things that traumatize you. Okay. Why you cannot forgive yourself first, then you go to step four first, then step three. You cannot. If you go step four first, then you step three, you cannot forgive. You cannot forgive because you still believe the lie. Only when you when you renounce the lie against your identity that you are very, very precious. You are not insignificant you are born as a woman you are uh, you're not you're not insignificant you are important because bible says you are sons of god okay if you don't believe this and reject the lie you cannot issue forgiveness to yourself you can say a thousand times okay say with me say with me repeat what i say but your heart cannot forgive your heart cannot forgive yourself or your heart cannot forgive others you have to first renounce the lies against your identity. Then you can forgive those who, who hurt you. Okay, They hurt you by saying something against your identity. That's why you, you get traumatized. right? So your, your first step is you have to renounce the lies against your identity. The last one, repent of negative emotion. Okay? Anger, hatred, bitterness, self, you... Very often you have negative emotion against yourself. Okay. You have to repent of tell Jesus, I'm sorry, I, I hate myself. I hate myself. I got self-anger. I got I got self-bitterness. I'm sorry, I've I've sinned against you. You have to say that. Okay. This self-anger, self-bitterness, self-rejection is a cause of autoimmune disease. It's a spiritual root cause of autoimmune disease. What is autoimmune disease? For example, arthritis, psoriasis, dementia, Parkinson, type 1 diabetes, where the immune system attacks, attacks the body's organs. Okay, this is a spiritual root cause. Why people have autoimmune disease? Doctor cannot do anything. Doctor can only give you medicine to suppress the symptom. And the person has got have to take steroid or take the medication for life. The doctor cannot help you, but only can manage the symptom by giving you steroid. So the only way you can cure is repent of self-hatred, self-anger, self-rejection by speaking to Jesus. Not speaking to yourself. It doesn't work that way. You have to tell Jesus. Okay? I repent of self-anger, self-bitterness, self-rejection. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Okay? Then you can be healed of this autoimmune any any autoimmune disease so these three identity forgiveness and negative emotion okay they are a package you cannot separate if you you, you just forgive somebody maybe you have done that 10, 10 years ago five years ago but you did not renounce your lie against your identity it doesn't work if you repent of negative emotion against somebody, against yourself, but you never release forgiveness, that means it's half done. It's very likely it will come back again. The negative emotion will come back because you have not released forgiveness. It has to be done three in one packet, in package, three in one go. Okay? You cannot do half. Do half, uh, later on the spirit will come back. The, the spirit of anger, spirit of hatred, bitterness will come back again. You have to do Three things, 
in one go. Of course, murmuring, if you think you will murmur against God, you, you can repent it. Uh, you unsuppressing, unhiding the memory is, is a must. If not, you cannot do any inner healing. Okay. So I did, the, the three, four, five, number three, number four, number five, these three are in the package. Okay. I think in many places when they teach you inner healing, inner healing, they may only put one or two of them. They may not have these three together in one shot. Okay. In one shot. So you need this tree in one shot. Otherwise, you cannot forgive. Otherwise, you cannot get rid of the negative emotion. If you think still think uh, you are rejected, uh, how can you have how, how can you stop the negative emotion? How can you have stop the self-anger, self-hatred? How can you stop? You can't stop. If you still believe that you are not the uh you are you're still rejected. So the the identity as sons of God is number one. It must be done first. Okay. Okay, let's do a exercise. Let's let's do an exercise now. Okay. Now it's 9 36. Okay, let's uh if you want to you close your you uh I think you you, you okay you close your eyes. I will lead you. You close your eyes, lift your hand to, to Jesus. Uh, okay, say with me, uh, Holy Spirit, lead me, reveal to me any wounds. Holy Spirit, reveal to me any wounds, the most important wounds, the most important hurts that I have in, in me. Okay, is there any wounds that I'm not aware of inside me, inside my soul? Show me. Show me. Okay. Is there anything that happened in my childhood? Anything that I happened in childhood that I, I can I cannot remember or can can hardly remember. Can you show me? Anything that I need to have a closure? Anything that I need to have a closure? Show me. Show me. Show me Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. If you if you if you have something uh, that Holy Spirit show you, what happened in your childhood? I want you to tell it to Jesus. Unhide everything. The more you unhide, the better. The more liberated you are. Okay. Bearing in mind, those memories are not yours. You are a new creation. You are a new man. Okay. Tell Jesus about the the, the trauma, the pain. Uh, you know, maybe in your childhood. Uh, what sort of pain? Family strife. You know. Tell it to Jesus, okay? Whatever you can remember, okay? Tell Jesus, okay? I renounce the lie, okay? The lie, the lie against me, against my identity. I renounce that lie against my identity. It's not true. The truth is, I am loved. I am precious to you. I am esteemed by you as sons and daughters of God. You are there for me to protect me. I don't understand how it happened. But it's not your fault. It's not your fault, Jesus. You are always faithful. You are always wanting to bring me to know you. You are a faithful God. If I have murmur and complain, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I murmur and complain against you, I'm sorry.
I want to close every door to the destroyer. Lord Jesus, you are faithful, prayer answering God. Lord Jesus, I want to forgive the one who hurts me. I want to forgive him. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what he is doing. Please forgive him. Please do not count it against him. Please do not count it against him. I forgive him myself. I forgive him also. Please bless him. Bless his health. Bless his health and his finances. Lord Jesus, I, I repent. I repent of my anger. I used to blame myself when I was I was young. I blame myself for what happened. I'm sorry for being angry with myself, angry with others. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for for the negative emotion. Okay. I'm sorry. Lord Jesus, if my when my parents, my parents, I, I against my parents, I have made inner vows. Inner vows means I vow I will not be like them. I, I vow that I will not, I will not do certain things. I want to cancel all those inner vows, Lord Jesus. I want to cancel all those inner vows. I want them to be broken by your precious blood, Lord Jesus. I want them to be broken off. I, I don't want to have any inner vows that, that will restrict me, Lord Jesus. I want to renounce them, cancel them. I repent of self-hatred, self-bitterness, self-anger. I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry for having anger. Okay. I'm sorry for, for self-anger. And also, I want to forgive myself. There are so many times, so many things I blame myself. I want to forgive myself. I want to forgive myself. I want to give, I want not only forgive my enemies, I want to forgive myself. I want to forgive myself. Lord Jesus, help me to forgive myself. Help me to forgive myself. Help me to, to be set free from self-anger, self-hatred. Set me free, Lord Jesus. Set me free, Lord Jesus. Okay, put your hands on your head. Huh? Put your hands on your head. Say with me, Lord, uh, uh, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command every spirit of anger, spirit of bitterness, spirit of uh, hatred, I command you to leave, to leave me right now in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of anger, hatred, and, 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 and bitterness and resentment to leave me right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, fill me with the spirit of love. Yes, spirit of love, peace, and sound mind. Give me the spirit of peace. Give me the spirit of peace, love, and sound mind. Sound mind. Fill me. And the spirit of joy also. Give me the spirit of joy. Let your joy be my strength. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I, and I command the, the destroyer to get out from my life in the name of Jesus. Get out from my life in the name of Jesus. The destroyer, get out in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, okay, we have finished this part. Uh, wait, let me see. Okay, what the exercise I gave you just now, okay, you, it's not a one-time thing. You may have other trauma, other, other experiences, okay? You may need to do it all, 
do it again, but for different types of trauma, different events. It may take about one or two weeks then to cleanse everything from your whole life, from your whole life, okay? Last week, we do cleansing of bloodline iniquity. Today, we learn about healing broken hearts, okay? So, after you cleanse already, after you heal already, what you need to do to be bulletproof is number one, zero self-expectation. Don't expect anything from yourself, okay? But you must have great expectation on the Holy Spirit in you, in you, okay? Say with me, Lord Jesus, I can do nothing without you, absolutely nothing. Everything that I try to do, say with me, yeah. Everything that I try to do with my own strength always fail. But, but when I, but because of your Holy Spirit in me, I can do great things, great exploit. Your spirit of wisdom, your spirit of understanding is already in me. Your spirit of counsel, your spirit of might. Your spirit of power is all in me. Through you, I can do great things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right? Why? Why? When you every time we got expectation, okay? Because the society around us always project expectation on us. You are expected to do well. Uh, you have you're supposed to have a, a condo, car, uh, you know, everything, you know, but. If you expect this on yourself and you don't mean it, uh, there will be a, a wound, a trauma again. Okay, you expect you should we should expect nothing. And every time when you pray to God, you talk to God, you always talk like that. I can do nothing without you. I can do nothing. You humble yourself. When you do that, you're humbling yourself, and you're taking away and tearing away any self expectation. But you must turn it around and say, but I can do nothing by myself. But through you, I, I shall do great exploit because of your spirit in me. Your Holy Spirit is in me. Okay? I'm destined to great, do great things for your kingdom. Okay? You must talk like that. If you talk, put yourself down and then you don't bring up, then you have poor self-esteem. You are, you are, you are not that speaking the truth. You are not speaking the truth. Okay? You are... You are, you are, you are you're telling lies because you are you the spirit of God is in you and you are supposed to do great things. You're you think by putting yourself down, you're humble, you're not humble. Humility is when you humility when is when you agree with what God's word say about you. You're not humble. Oh, I can do nothing. That's it. You're not humble. Because that's a lie. You might you have to bring yourself down and then you bring yourself up again. You understand? This is very important. When you don't bring yourself up, you can be attacked by the devil again. You can be attacked. Okay? If you believe that I, I, I'm weak, I'm a sinner, finish. You're going to get a spiritual attack. You are a sinner, you were a sinner, but now you are holy. You are blameless. You are full of righteousness. Okay? That's, that's, that's the truth. Because that's your spirit. Your spirit is holy. Okay? Your spirit is more than a conqueror. And your spirit is you, not your soul, not your body. Okay? That is how you can be bulletproof. Zero self-expectation, but great expectation on the Holy Spirit inside you. Okay? If you got great expectation on yourself, you get you get traumatized. Okay? If you have zero expectation on Holy Spirit in you, the devil will attack you. Okay? So you must do this. Do this. Okay? When you do this, zero expectation, great expectation of the Holy Spirit, you are exercising humility. Okay? Number two, know your true identity in Christ and His finished work. This is very important. It's very important. Okay? His finished work. What are His finished work? Okay? Healing. Deliverance. Second, second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. He has because of his poverty, okay, although he was rich, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, 
although he was rich, he became poor, so that through his poverty, you can become rich. Jesus on the cross took away your poverty. He took away your poverty. He not only took away your sickness. Matthew 8, 17, he bore your sicknesses and infirmities. Okay? The finished work of Jesus is very important. You need to know them. If you go and listen to my video, okay, you, 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 if you listen to my video, three, the three ways to bring heaven on earth, you will see all this. You will see all this. Okay? So you must believe your identity is your spirit. Your ident your spirit is clothed with power of Holy Spirit, Hebrews 1 7. The devil is scared of you. If you know your identity, the scared, the devil will run far, far away from you. Okay, and 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 uh, your and I think this one I read, I talked to you about already. Uh, so now I want to talk to you about the last part for your unsafe loved one. What can you do? Your family members has had a, has a trauma, depressions, schizo, panic attacks, and they are not Christian. What can you do? How can you help them? By after you learn all this truth, how can you save them? And they are very hostile against you. They don't want to listen to you. What can you do? What can you do? Okay. If they have any of these, these attacks or depression, they are very good candidates to receive the gospel, to hear the gospel because they are poor in spirit. Okay. They are good targets. Okay. They want, they have oppression, depression. They want to get up, but they don't know how. And so you come along and you tell them certain things, certain truth about their identity and they can feel instantly a release. Okay? And they, will, they are ready to hear the gospel of the kingdom from you. Okay? Mental trauma. Okay, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of students nowadays, uh, if you listen to those parents, uh, they have uh, depression and suicide rate is going up. Why? Because school society is, is telling school and, and friends are telling the students you must do well in your studies. Do well in study. Your happiness is because it's based on your studies. If you don't do well, your future is gone. So there is an indirect expectation projected onto students nowadays. Okay? Okay? Self-expectation. They must do well. And if, when they do well, good. They, 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 they are intelligent, they do well, good. But if their studies are not so good, then they can have a mental trauma or they can have an emotional trauma. So, so, how, so how, how you can help them? You proclaim liberty to them. You proclaim, uh, you, uh, if you can, you proclaim their identity. Like, for example, uh, you can do well. I, I believe you can. I know you. You are a good person. You are study. You are uh, uh, your future is not depending on your your school result. Okay, there are many people who are successful not depending on the school result. You affirm their identity. Your identity is not based on your school result if they are not doing well. Okay, you you affirm their identity. This is one way to heal any trauma, any wounds to their soul. Okay, and when you talk like that to them, ah. Uh, they will want to listen to you more. They will want to listen to you more. Okay. You ask Holy Spirit, what lies is he believing against his identity? What lies? Is it, is it, uh, uh, is, is he not, not able to meet the expectation of his, uh, uh, of his, uh, friends or his peers or his family members or school system what is the lie that he's believing in uh, against his identity there's only a few only it's just, it's only a few okay did he have an accident before recently if he let's say he has an accident and then he thinks that oh this life is so so scary anytime can die anytime can have serious accident 
So a spirit of trauma, uh, a trauma can happen to him, a spirit of fear can go into him. Okay. So for non-believer, you can affirm him. But for Christian, it's easier. Christians, baby Christians, uh, they got depression, rejection, or whatever. It is much, much, much easier to uh, deliver him. Okay. You just have to tell him your self-worth is not based on your uh not based on your school, school result. Okay. You can just affirm him, uh, encourage him, and and if he's a Christian. You tell him the word of God say you are this, you are that, you are a conqueror. Okay, this, uh, you 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 ask ask the spirit of wisdom to uh, and understanding to come upon him. You you prophesy over him, and you tell him that you will reign in life. Okay, but you tell him don't expect anything from yourself, don't expect anything, but expect great things from Holy Spirit. It's wrong to expect things from yourself as a Christian. Okay. If he's not a Christian, you cannot do anything. But as a Christian, you can tell him that don't expect anything from yourself. Only expect great things from the Holy Spirit inside you. Okay? So, if you can, prophesy over him. Prophesy means you speak over his life. I, I, you put your, you ask them, you ask him, can I pray over you? Can I pray over you? And he said, okay. Then he said, I, you pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Then you tell him, I prophesy over you. I prophesy over you that you will be used by God mightily. The spirit of wisdom and understanding will come upon you. Will come upon you. Okay? Prophesying is different from prayer. You speak on behalf of God to the person. I prophesy over you. You shall do great things for God's kingdom. The spirit of the spirit of, of God is upon you. He has anointed you, okay, to do great things for his kingdom. Okay, for example, for example, okay. And then after that, you, 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 you tell him to trust in God. Trust in God. God will help you, okay. Okay, so, so, there was one time this woman with depression, okay, come to the healing room, healing room. I was there help ministering and then this woman come. She was, she tried to commit suicide before. She got a spirit of depression. When she come in, she was like a zombie. You talk to her, she don't look at you. She looks weird. Okay, she's, she's from IMH uh, mental hospital. She was, it was, she was kept there after she tried to kill herself. Okay. So I talked to her. I told her, "Do you know that uh, uh, taking, uh, killing yourself, suicide is a sin?" Then he said, "Yeah, yeah, it's a sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah." Then, uh, then I, I, I'm a failure. You know, I'm a failure in front of everybody. You know, I. I so I, when I heard him say, her say this thing, this thing, uh, then I, I understand this is what caused her to kill herself. She thinks she's a failure. She, she, she come from a broken marriage. Okay, she thinks that in her family she's, is this. You know, she's rejected already. So we we st we start to affirm her. Okay, you have to, you have to. Why you kill yourself? Suddenly she said she said suddenly uh, uh, she just feel, just feel like ending ending it all. Okay, like a spirit come inside her. Okay, so I tell her, no, you are a good person. You see, I, when I talk to you, I know you are you have been telling about what you serve in the church, how you serve in the church. You are a good person. Everybody likes you. See, I affirm her, and then I say to her, okay, I say to her, your identity is not, not what happened to you. It's, it's what the word of God said. You are a daughter of God. You are the beloved of God. You are, uh, you are uh, esteemed highly by, by Father God. Okay? If you don't believe that, uh, you are going to suffer another depression again. You know why? I explained to him about the Luke chapter 4, about Jesus. Everyone must go through the test. Only when you pass the test about your identity, you can enter his rest. Okay, this test will never end until you pass. You have to choose. Do you want to choose to believe you are esteemed highly? She said yes. So I asked her to pray a prayer with me. I, I she, 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 she renounced believing that she's 
not worthy, she's rejected, and then she accepted, she prayed a prayer saying that she is beloved of God. And uh, you know what happened after that? After 45 minutes, she was smiling, looking at everyone inside the room, shaking hands, and then she left. Totally changed. Her countenance totally changed. And all in 45 minutes. Okay? And all I did is to affirm her identity as sons and daughters of God. That's all. That's all I did. Okay? So there's a way to talk to pre-believers. If your, your loved ones are pre-believers, you can talk to him. Affirm their identities. When you when you are always doing that affirming, uh, they are so they like you very much. One, they just like you. Okay, they just they will listen to you, because you 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 are giving them hope. You are giving them a lot of encouragement in their moments of of fear, anxiety, depression, and then you are coming around and say something opposite. They listen to you, and then you, then you you come along and say, talk about the gospel of the kingdom. Gospel of the kingdom now. Okay? Jesus wants the devil kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus wants to give you abundant life. Jesus wants to help you. Okay? You just have to take him, his, his gift. He died for your sin. Accept him. Okay? That he's your savior. He died on the cross for your sin. Accept him. And when you accept him, your sins are taken away, and Jesus will send his Holy Spirit to live inside you. Your, your spirit will have two spirits. You have Holy Spirit and your spirit, and your spirit are born again, new creation. When you tell, tell somebody a pre-believer, if you want to be born again, new spirit, if you, if you explain clearly what is what, what you mean by that, okay, your spirit, your actually your, your body uh, is just a shell, your spirit. This is how I share gospel to people. Okay, how we can be born again. We are actually spirit living in body. Okay, a lot, a lot of pre-believer, they, they accept it, they understand it, and you'll be surprised. They, are, they want it. They are very interested, excited, because they, they, they know that they make a lot of mistakes in the past, and they live in regrets. When you, when you tell them, say, when you accept Jesus to take away your sin, you can be born again, new, a new creation, new spirit. They are so excited, they want. It's a good news. Why are we not sharing this good news? Why are we sharing the gospel of salvation? The gospel of kingdom Born again, new creation is so exciting, so attractive. Good news, everyone wants it, and 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 I find that many salvation happen because you share the gospel of the kingdom, and not gospel of salvation. Gospel of the kingdom is everything. Gospel of salvation is only half, half the package. Okay. Okay, that's it. I I. I, 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 my, my, my sharing is end, end, the end, finish. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. And uh, I hope I, I hope you all understand and, and what I said and not get confused, more confused. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you, okay, I'm going to unmute everybody. And then if you, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, wow, I got 70 people. Wow, wow this is awesome. Okay, uh, how to unmute everybody? Okay, I tell you what, uh, I will let whoever got questions, uh, you you unmute yourself. Okay, now I now is I think everybody's mute. If you have any questions, you ask. You just unmute yourself and then you ask. Okay, first come first serve. Okay, anyone got questions? You can just unmute yourself and ask question. Ah, uh, Pastor. Yes. I, I managed to see your Zoom link at about nine o'clock. I just joined in about nine. I really love to hear more. Uh, oh. would it be okay to ask for your recording to to listen again? Your message very very useful, very helpful to help other people. Thank you yes. so much for your generosity and your yes. sincere teaching. Really appreciate. It. I can feel the goosebump. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, praise God, praise God. It's all because, because of the Holy Spirit. So I, uh, in case those who came late, uh, you must at me at this number. Uh, then I will send the PowerPoint and the recording, the video, the YouTube link to, to you. Okay. My number is there on the chat, on the chat. 8181-3631. Okay. I will send you the YouTube as recording as well as the PowerPoint, everything. 
So that this is Malaysia number or Singapore number? Singapore, Singapore. Oh, Singapore. Okay, yeah, so uh, I must add. Oh, oh, you're from Malaysia? Ah, we're Malaysian. Ah, I'm Malaysian. Oh. oh, wow. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, at at sixty five. Uh, at sixty five, in front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you you believe not? You do you really believe that can be instant? Can be instantly changed just by proclaiming liberty to somebody. Is it possible? Yeah, possible. I've I've done it. I've done it many times, but of course some people don't want to believe lah. You know they. They, oh yeah, I, I go for psychiatrists, I go to this uh, uh, church for inner healing, so many sessions, then now I come to you, uh, don't know can or not. So some people are like that, so they, they, they you know, but those who believe, totally believe what I say, okay, uh, and, and, and they, 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 they choose to believe to that, that, that identity is a choice, okay, the they identity as, as a son of God is the key to to have inner healing, okay. Renounce the lie, okay. Renounce is a choice. It begins with a choice, a belief. What you believe, okay, and that will, that will open up for your unforgiving, unfor forgiving to yourself, forgiving to your others, and also to repent of negative emotion. That first step is renounce the lie against your identity. That is the first step. That is the first step to uh, uh, inner healing. Okay, it can be done. If they're willing to believe, but of course they must be Christian. You cannot believe that you're sons of God. You're not Christian, okay? But you you must learn to share the gospel, of the kingdom, okay? I I I think I will one one of these days I will I will short uh share a, a short read short teaching a short teaching. I think this teaching is very short. Gospel, of the kingdom, is very short, okay? And powerful. And Jesus will confirm with signs following. If you share gospel of salvation, there's nothing to confirm. When you sh every time you share the gospel of the kingdom, uh, Jesus is waiting to show. You go and read Mark chapter 16, verse 15 until verse 20. Jesus said, Go to go into the world and preach the, the, the gospel. Then, then those who believe will cast out demons and heal the sick. Then last, last verse, verse 20. Okay, Jesus said, Okay, he, he will confirm with signs. He will confirm the words with signs. So, what word? Gospel of the kingdom. If you preach gospel of salvation, there's nothing to confirm. Every time when you preach the gospel of the kingdom, you can sense the atmosphere change. The anointing, the presence of Jesus will come. Not just anointing, presence. Every time you preach the gospel of the kingdom, the presence of Jesus will come. Amen. It's different. When you preach gospel of salvation, I don't sense any anointing. Yeah, people can get saved, but a lot of people, they will, they will, they will start to bad mouth. Oh, Oh yeah, this guy always preach one. This guy, but you preach gospel of kingdom, it's so wonderful good news, you know. It's a wonderful good news. People like to hear. Thousands of people listen to Jesus during his time when he preached gospel of kingdom. Thousands of people, it's such a wonderful news. You know, you'll be born again, new creation, new spirit. People love to hear, you know. Why are we not preaching the true gospel of the kingdom? To your loved ones, you know, we are supposed to preach the gospel of the kingdom. But conversion is not you. Your the Holy Spirit will convert, com, convict, and convert. Your job is to preach the correct gospel, not not the gospel of salvation. The correct gospel, and then Holy Spirit can come in to convict that this is true. This is true. The, the person will feel the heart, the heart something convicting him that this is true. You know. You understand? If you don't preach gospel of kingdom, uh, and but you preach gospel of salvation, the Holy Spirit cannot do his job. Right? Okay, Pastor Tim has yes. a question. Yes. Um, I come across a person, I mean, come from ministry, and um, whatever you tell her that is true of the word of God, she'll say, yeah, 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 I believe. Yeah, yeah, I believe. And then when you tell her anything, you highlight anything to do with herself, she will have a lot of buts this, but that. And there seems to be such a, a difficult barrier to get through. Mm -hmm. so it's very hard to bring healing. But mm -hmm. if you tell her, um, you know, meditate on Psalms 91. So, okay, okay. And she memorize without really ap appropriating it. So how do you get that person to 
really understand, let the word sink in. Because everything she, you tell her, she'll agree. But when it comes to herself, she'll say, but this, but that. And she'll talk very, very fast. Until I felt it was rather rude for me, but I have to, I have to keep on interrupting and say, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, uh, uh, I think uh, all depend how 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 is the ministry is done. Uh, <laughs> I cannot give an answer for this, You know, uh, it all depend. Uh, you see, there are, there are times when I, I do ministry. Yeah, okay, the people who come many times for ministry. And they do not understand that repentance. They just say say what I say what the person say. Okay, repent. I repent this. I repent. It's just safe through the mind. They are not saying from the heart. So the 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 the, the, the evil spirit cannot be cast out. The kundalini spirit, the yoga spirit cannot be cast out. Okay, because he just say what what the 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 the, the, the minister said. Yeah, from it the, seems from, to be from, so. Uh, yeah, it seems so, to be so. So, so I explained to him, you must rend your heart when you, you repent. You must rend your heart, R-E-N-D, Joel 2, 13. You must tear your heart. What is tear? I explained very clearly, is your heart is the place where you decide to choose or good or evil. Your heart is not your mind. Your heart is where you resolve good or resolve evil. So when, when you when you resolve to practice yoga, and there's Kundalini spirit come inside you. So when you when you repent, you tear your heart. You, because you, the heart is where you choose to do good or do evil. So when you repent, you must tear, rend your heart. Rend, the word rend means tear. Tear your heart, rend your heart. So you tear out from heart whatever negative that you put in. So this is how you repent. So I explained very clearly and in and, and one go, the person is delivered. Previously, he come many times for deliverance but cannot. You know? So there are, there are, there are, there are times, sometimes the, the understanding of the truth, uh, the, the, they fail to understand certain truth and that, that's why they're stuck. Okay? So I, oh, yeah. I I make it a point to to explain uh, very clearly. Best best is people who go through my sessions uh, my my PowerPoint understand clearly, and then when I minister to them, it's more effective. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions for anyone? Anyone else? I, well, I if, think. Yeah. Well, so, if not, can I ask the, the follow up? So. Uh, yeah. When when you lead the person in prayer, the person just repeats almost like not thinking ritualistic. So um, so we get the person to say, okay, you repent and say it yourself. And that's when we realize that the person has very superficial kind of prayer. So so it's really like at this stage is having to teach some truths before we carry on. Oh. Well, 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 well. Sometimes, sometimes there are cases we have difficult cases. So I ask them to do Joel two twelve fast and weep. There are some cases, some cases that are very hard to deliver <clears throat> because maybe they are very steep into it. They are they are practice new age, for example, new age uh, for for years. Uh, then suddenly you ask them to quit, and then then you want to get rid of the spirit inside. <clears throat> so they may have to fast and fast okay. like three days. Yeah. Okay. So this person is not so much practicing those things. It's from what we have discerned mm -hmm. when we actually call in the husband and minister together. Because usually it's just one to one. I mean one person and then mm -hmm. a team ministers to one patient. Mm -hmm. But when we finally say let bring in the husband together, that's where every little thing they will start arguing or she's arguing. That's the so spirit know, of there's a spirit of offense. When when two persons got spirit of offense, uh, they come together. Right. They will manifest. They, you will trigger right. each other. Right. So so to minister to such a person, after discovering what is the truth, we do we need to separate them and then give her some face and if, get her. If, if you, let's say one person is delivered of spirit of offense, uh, then when two when two person come together, they will not will not manifest. You need two to for it to trigger each other. So, right. so, so now that it's exposed where the problem lies, after that we don't deal. We don't. We should not continue ministering together, and we'll just bring the husband to one room and the wife to another room, minister to them separately. Uh, okay, I think we answer. Maybe we can. Uh, you can WhatsApp me. I can answer you separately. I think. Okay. I think we, okay. we let right. any anyone right. else right. got any question before I. Uh, yeah.
can I can I put what she was saying that uh, to those people? Because sometimes you need to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal you the person you ministry. Because some some of us, what you see in the surface is not what is inside the heart, like a pastor said. So mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit revealed to you such a person who constantly argue and, and, and bring discussion, you will know how to minister to them because you need yeah. to ask the Holy Spirit, what is the problem with this person? What is their problem? Because they might be just, what you've seen is just the surface, it's not the root. So you need to know the root. You need to yeah. have a conversation with the Holy Spirit before step ministry to them. Otherwise, they will lose your time over and over. Sometimes I face these kind of people and I have learned every time I go to the Holy Spirit, I say, Lord, I yeah, don't yeah. want to waste time with this person. Show me how to minister to them and it's effective. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, we have to uh, rely on the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, uh, I, I really, you, you should, you all should go and watch my first video. The first video about three ways to kingdom of heaven now. Really, we, we, I, I teach three kinds of praying. Soaking prayer. Soaking praying. When you do soaking praying, uh, you, uh, the way I, I teach is different. Okay, you, you learn really, you, your ability to hear from the Holy Spirit will go up another level. Okay. I teach three types of praying, prophetic intercession, soaking prayer, and also ministering to a lot. Ministering to a lot is the glory realm. Soaking prayer is how to hear his voice clearly, super clearly. Okay, prophetic intercession is you pray in the spirit, you pray with understanding, you see vision, and you do what the Father do. You say what you hear the Father say. Okay, so I teach exactly, uh, I teach very clearly all the practical ways I hope, uh, I mean, if you want to, we want to go more uh, higher in the ministering to others, it's good that we uh, have these three kinds of praying. So you will bring your spirituality to another level so that you can minister more powerfully. Like I say, for example, you pray in tongue one hour, rivers of living water will gush out from you, right? One hour, pray in tongue, rivers of living water will gush out from you. And then when people touch you, they get healed. The power will move from your body and you get they get healed. So all these things I taught in my the video on the three ways for kingdom now. So I hope you all can uh, uh, go into it and then you can start to hear God's voice super clearly, like another level. Okay. Okay. So any any more questions? Pastor, just now this Tracy, uh, you talking about like you will share about like share uh, gospel of kingdom. Yep. Would you have teaching as well? Sorry. Uh, gospel of King, kingdom. Yeah. yeah. About how to share the gospel of kingdom. Oh, yeah. Gospel of king, kingdom is uh, how to share. You're asking me how to share. Uh, yeah, correct. Will you do another teaching on it, or I, I probably will will be. But this this gospel of kingdom is very short. I, I, I may lump it with another. Uh, maybe the next section I will teach on gospel of kingdom. I will teach on breaking soul ties. I will teach on. Uh, breaking inner vows. I will teach on breaking bitter root judgment. So I, I may I may lump it somewhere. Uh, maybe in the next session, I will I'll do this kind of thing because gospel of the kingdom is very short, very very brief only. But it's the truth that set people free. If you don't share this gospel of kingdom, people can be free. You know, you see, everyone in this world who are not believers, uh, they are they are they are at being accused still and destroyed by the devil. Q means mental health being attacked, emotional health attacked, physical health attacked. Steal means financially they are being stole, stole by the devil, destroyed by, that means their relationships are being attacked. So Q, steal and destroy. So when you tell people uh, the uh, gospel of kingdom, uh, there's is, there, there is a gospel, there's, a, there's this kingdom of darkness and the king, kingdom of God. The kingdom of darkness is a devil trying to kill, steal and destroy. Okay? And the kingdom of God is our, our father, our, is, is really our father, our God is really our father, is there wanting to protect us. When you tell this gospel to anybody, any non-believer, they will get excited because the devil is attacking them. And all believers, they are being attacked. And when you tell them about gospel, uh, about this uh, kingdom of darkness, the devil kills you and destroy, they get excited. They get interested. They want to know more. Can you please tell me more? They are eager. Your hearts are open up. The mm. truth set them free. The, this truth will set them free. The, this is the first part that will set them free. They want to know more. How to how to be set free. Yeah. You know? 
So they, they will listen, they pay attention, they will not complain, oh, this guy always preach on this guy. Always preach. Gospel of salvation, people you will, turn, will tell you off. Don't come and preach. You know? But gospel of kingdom is they get excited. They want to know how. Right? So 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 you tell them about the gospel of king, uh, these two kingdoms, and then the devil kills you and destroy. And then Jesus said, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Kingdom of heaven is very near. And what, what Jesus is saying that when we repent, we shut the door to the devil. Shut the door to the devil. When you say repent, shut the door to the devil, everybody wants to repent. If you don't say that, uh, what, what, what should I repent? I never kill. I never steal. Why should I repent? I'm a good person. But when you tell people gospel of kingdom, Matthew 4, 17, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Jesus preached repentance and Jesus preached kingdom of heaven near. Okay. It means that when you repent, shut the door of the devil and you walk in the faith realm, anointing realm and the presence, heaven will manifest in your life now. Now. Heaven will manifest. Miracles will come to you. Okay? Mm. So everybody want to repent. Everybody, oh, I, yeah, I got sin. I got this. I got that. They'll tell you. You know? So gospel of kingdom will set chapter 3. Because mm. when once they repent, uh, they are delivered. They repent when they re when they say I repent I'm a sinner I I I, I, I repent of this I repent of that they are delivered you know so you have to tell them about the kingdom of darkness the kingdom of heaven and God is the kingdom of heaven God is is the the father of all spirits we are we, when you and you must tell them the Holy Spirit okay because immediately after they receive Jesus you baptize them with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. if you don't do that now nah, the devil may snatch them away mm -hmm. okay. You must explain the devil, the, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Okay. When you accept Jesus, take away your sins. This this gift, this love gift of God, uh, Jesus, mm -hmm. take away your sin. Okay. It, you, you are cleansed. And then the Holy Spirit will come inside you. Okay. And make your spirit born again. You become a brand new. Mm -hmm. and, and when you say that, they are excited again. Wow. Wow. What a good news. I want mm -hmm. it. And then on top of that, Holy Spirit will go inside your spirit. You have two spirit. Holy Spirit and your spirit, two, two spirit. Two now, now you are one. But now, if you are baptized with uh when you are uh as when you accepted Jesus, you have two spirit. Wow, it's such a good news. And they they are even happier, eager to receive Jesus. Not they are, they, are, they have been attacked by, by maybe the devil, nightmares, you know, they see shadows everywhere evil spirit everywhere, oppression, depression. And now you say, you will get two. It's from one spirit become two. Holy Spirit, God himself lives inside you. Wow. Mm -hmm. They get excited. They want it. So they are so quick to accept Jesus. The gospel of the kingdom will attract, it's because it's a good news, very good news. It's so exciting. They love it, you know. And then, and then when you say it, uh, people will, oh, wow, tell me more, tell me more. Of course, you can tell more. Uh, you can tell, go deeper, deeper, deeper. There are so many levels of that. But the, these are the, the, the main key points. When you tell, they will love to hear. And they will accept Jesus very easily. And then the Holy Spirit will convict. Holy Spirit will convict. Yes, it's true. It's true. They can feel the heart, the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and you ask them, do you want to accept now? Say with me. I believe in my heart, confess in my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. He died on the, uh, he died, he died and rose again on the third day. See, that's it. And then you put your hand on his head. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill him, in. fill him. That's it. He's 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 born again. You know, the Holy Spirit goes goes inside him, and the Holy Spirit will lead him, guide him, teach him. Yeah. So this is how, in a nutshell, uh, how you can share the gospel. It's so it's so short and simple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Pastor. Yeah. Um, Rini. Yeah. Can Can I check with you? Yeah. Um. If it's uh, how do I say? Okay, I believe the one of my friends or uh, sister in Christ, she her house is not clean. I seen like um, the spirit of death in the house, mm -hmm. and uh, so so. I believe house cleansing is important. Mm. Uh, instead of just uh, uh, doing going through the inner healing and deliverance, uh, do you agree, or uh, you have a better solution? Yeah, house, house cleansing is is uh is something that 
that should be done. But uh, the person also, it's better that person learn about faith, anointing and the presence. So I recommend the, the mm. leader, the, the house owner also do this. Uh, there, 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 there are times that they are very often, if he's not walking in faith or walking in the presence, mm. uh, the devil can suka suka attack. La. So mm. he, if he knows all this, uh, I, so I recommend him go and watch the video, how to mm. host the presence. Okay. And you, mm. you can, you can, you can actually, I, sometimes, sometimes I come to a place, uh, I find that I can sense the farmer inside the house. I can mm. sense it. Then mm. I will, I will, I will use, uh, uh, I will use the verse John 20, 21. Uh, mm. uh, whosoever sin you remit shall be remitted. Jesus said, whosoever sins that you remit shall be remitted. This whoso, the word whosoever mm. is talking about, uh, Oh, sorry, John 20, verse 23. 20, mm. 23. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. Whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. So this whosoever is saying that Jesus giving us authority to remit sin. Remit sin of people and also of places. You know, some places that are defiled, there's an iniquity on the, on the house or on the land because of the uh, uh, idolatry of the sacrifice or whatever. So this, this house can... Be def- this house can be defiled, and Jesus mm. is saying this verse, John 20, 23. Okay, you, you believe it, meditate on it, and then you because you believe it, you say to this house, I re- in Jesus' name, I remit every iniquity, every defilement of this house with the blood of Jesus. You just say it after you believe what, what, what this verse said. You must look at the King James Version, mm. you don't look at the New King James or the what, whatever version, only the King, the King James Version. With the strong concordance, the mm. strong concordance. If you look at the strong concordance, whosoever means where, not only who, no, where, whosoever also. in the in, in the the, mm. the Greek uh, strong concordance means where, mm. what, who. Mm. So when you when you, Jesus is saying that you can remit sin. Jesus giving mm. you authority to cleanse place. So mm. you believe in this verse, and then you go to a house that you feel that is defiled. And say to the house, say just walk there and say, I in the I remit the every sin iniquity in this house with the blood of Jesus. Just say it. Mm. Okay. Can I can we say it outside the house? Because um she refused to let us in. Then you can't do anything. The house owner I mean, that's at the house, huh? Cannot the house owner must be the one uh together with Except, you, say mm. he, the house oh. owner must say it together with you. Also, okay? mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Uh, Pastor, uh, just now you were telling us about the your the, there's uh, three types of prayer. Uh, uh, okay. And, okay. Can you yeah. show your your face? Oh, sorry. Um. Yeah, three types of prayer. Yeah, yeah. prayer. Uh, we uh, we we missed that altogether. I don't know how many people missed that. Is it possible for you to do that teaching again? Oh, uh, it's my in my YouTube. If you uh, if you go to my YouTube link, uh, you can see. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you subscribe, if you send your, let's say you text me, WhatsApp me, I will uh-huh. send you the PowerPoint of what I taught just now. Inside uh-huh. the PowerPoint, there is a link to the the YouTube which I teach on three types of praying: uh-huh. soaking, praying, okay. prophetic intercession, and the ministering to a lot. Okay. Oh, okay. You, Thank you you. You, you. you you need this three. Ministering mm-hmm. to the Lord is a glory realm. When you minister to the Lord, means intimacy. When you mm-hmm. intimacy, the presence of Jesus appears. The presence of Jesus is different from the anointing. Mm. The power, the wind of the Holy Spirit. When you pray in tongues, the power, the, the, the wind of the Holy Spirit is stirred up. The gift of the Holy Spirit is stirred up. Mm-hmm. And then you minister to people for healing or for deliverance. But the presence is when you, when you, when you minister to the Lord with intimacy. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I explain very clearly. And, and what, there are three... There are four ways of ministering to a lot. Like, for example, dancing in the spirit is intimacy. Okay, mm-hmm. dancing in the spirit, intimacy, the presence of Jesus will appear. Ministering to a lot with the word. Okay, there are, there are mm-hmm. seven pillars of, of faith. The whole Bible, the entire Bible, there are seven pillars of faith in God's love for you as a son and daughter. There are the whole Bible, seven pillars of faith. When you take these seven pillars, I, I wrote it down there, and then you, you, you use it to minister to a lot. The presence will appear. 
the glory and the presence of Jesus will come. Okay? Because it's intimacy. Faith and intimacy. Faith and intimacy. The presence of Jesus will manifest. So we, we enter the abundant life. The prom, the We enter his rest when we have the presence. Not anointing. No, anointing is for ministry. Presence is for you to enter his rest. R-E-S-T. Okay? So you you go and uh, you text me and then I'll send you the PowerPoint of this, this PowerPoint today and then you, you just look at the uh, you know the link, the YouTube link and then you learn about three kinds of praying. Mm, Many you. prophets, uh, they're soaking prayer. They don't pray in tongues so much. They do soaking prayer. So I teach you how to do soaking prayer. I, inside the, the video, I teach you how to do soaking prayer. Mm-hmm. Soaking prayer is the key to hear his voice. Clearly, super clearly. Super clearly, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Uh, hello, Pastor. I have one question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is your take or understanding on this thing uh, which they call uh, as territorial uh, spirits? You know, sometimes they control yeah. a particular area and also mm-hmm. the strong pole, you know? The, mm-hmm. the strong men, they call it. The territorial yeah. spirit, uh, 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 this territory, they are, they, are, they are sometimes called principalities. There are, are different levels of spirits, okay? So uh, we don't go and bind them. You, you can bind whatever spirits in your family, in your household, but when it comes to territorial spirits uh, or principalities, uh, okay, is when God calls you to bind, then you bind. And and when when, when we talk about territorial spirits, uh, there is a there's an iniquity of the land, the whole land, not the whole of Singapore or the whole of Topayo, or you know, there's an iniquity, uh, that need to be repented, identification repentance. You you need to cleanse the, the iniquity before you can you can expel them. So these are, uh, and, and before you do all that, you need to cleanse your own iniquity. The last week I teach about, about how to cleanse your bloodline. Yeah, so you you, 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 you probably uh, need to do all that before you, God can use you to cleanse the land. That's what Zechariah chapter 3 talks about. Zechariah chapter 3 talks about the priest Joshua has got, God says to the priest, high priest Joshua, take away his filthy robe. Then after that he said, I've t- taken away your iniquity. And he said, then God says, if you follow in my ways, you will remove the iniquity of the land. Okay? You have to, you cannot deal with the imp- principalities directly. You have to deal with the iniquity of the land. Then you can k- expel the principalities or the territorial spirits. Okay. I, I think we end here. Okay. I, thanks for coming. Uh, yeah. I, I'm really, I'm happy. Uh, today I got 70 people. I think it's my record. I used to be, Less and uh, you know, forty something today is seventy. Praise the Lord! Uh, so happy to see all of you, and uh, uh, stay tuned. Maybe maybe uh, next session uh, I probably want to do something about uh, uh, this bitter root judgment, inner vows, and and uh, soul ties breaking, all these things. Uh, probably next next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank I, you. Thank, you. thank you very thank much. You, yeah. Are we on your communication list? Oh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, well, you can you can put my name in your. Uh, you text me. I can add you in in the communication list, lah. Okay. Can? Okay, okay. So that we will be updated on your your teaching session yeah. every yes, time. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Good night. God bless you, Pastor. Good night. God bless you. Get Looking forward to your next sharing. Okay. okay, see all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. you Pastor. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Pastor, thank you. God bless. Bye. God bless okay. you. God bless, God bless you. you, Pastor Tim. God bless you. Bye. Bye.